data scientist. Today, as we're going to be, as we have a very prestigious guest with us and a very good team with us, I would like your presence and your interaction as much as possible. For that, if you would like to turn, your, turn on your camera and uh, also I would request you to turn off your, uh, mute your mic without, so that there's no disruption and there's no voice in background, uh, that will be great from your side. Now I'll be talking about black books. So black books never fails to fulfill the educational needs of its students. Black books is a new age digital platform aimed to upskilling and preparing engineering graduates for the tech economy. Besides imparting training on artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud computing, cybersecurity, data science, etc., we care for overall development of the students. As a part of this, we initiated the mock interviews for students by experienced industry professionals. This unique initiative helps hundreds of students as the mock interviews are witnessed by 200 plus students. This gives them the opportunity to learn from the others and prepare themselves from the challenges side. So this was the short and crisp um, experience at Black Box. Now, I would like to welcome our esteemed guest speaker for today, Mr. Pranav Jay Jaipurkar. He completed his bachelor's, bachelor's from College of Engineering, Pune, India in May 2014 and studied Master's of Engineering in Computer Engineering with GP of 3.87 3 out of 4 from A. James Clark School of Engineering under the University of Maryland, College Park in May 2020. He's an experienced data analyst and a big data engineer with hands-on experience in data manipulation, data wrangling, data analysis, and in data database administration. He's currently working at Advilis Financial Services Limited as a data scientist, and previously had work, worked at data scientist at Zidley and a data analyst at Forward Safety and Ugum Solutions. If I keep talking about his experience for the whole night today, even then it won't end. So now let us invite him to share his vast ocean of knowledge in data science. Over to you, sir. Yeah, hi guys. Hi, I welcome all of you to this particular lecture. And I really hope that all of you guys get a lot of from this particular session. You are devoting a lot of your time. So to as a Nikita has told all of you guys, I have been working in this industry and in this analytics industry for a long duration. So I, I really have some good experience to share with all of you guys on this. So Nikita has already told about my experience where I have worked, where, what are the, my academic qualifications and everything. And to be honest with you, when I started working, uh, when I joined my first job at that particular point of time, I was not sure about what exactly is this analytics industry. Like I had the necessary academic background, but obviously I was not having the experience. So obviously bookish knowledge, academic knowledge is different. And when you go to apply the same knowledge in the street, the needs are different. The, the, the experience that you get is really different. And that is probably one of the major reasons because of which there is a huge gap in the skill sets that are required in industry and what industries are experiencing. So people in academics perform really good, but when it comes to placement, still there is a huge gap in India and not only India, all over the, uh, all over the world, there is a huge gap in that. Even in United States, the gap is less, but there is still a gap. And the reason for that is because the academic curriculum that we have, it is not preparing us well as compared to the skills that we are expecting, right? So back during my master's, I studied almost everything in data science, but there was not a single advanced course curriculum for SQL. So as all of you guys know, SQL will be a really important part in the next few curriculum lecture sites, you will understand that. But still, I was not able to learn SQL. Well, I, I'd learned a lot of advanced SQL when I started working at my first job at Ugam Solutions, where I actually worked as a SQL developer. So these are some of the statistics about IT industry on LinkedIn. So machine learning engineer and data scientist job has seen an exponential growth and it is like approximately the second fastest growing profession on, according to LinkedIn. And there will always be a sharp increase in the demand for data scientists. But by 2025, this demand is expected to be at its peak. So according to IBM, an increment of 3,64,000 to 27,20,000 openings would be generated by 2025. And the reason for this is pretty simple. Like whenever you are accessing the scope of a particular job role, you should access what that job holder actually does. So during the last few years, what has happened is that there has been a 
tremendous surge in the data that has been recorded in every organization so i studied electrical engineering from college of engineering today i i am one of an electrical engineer but what happens is when it comes to electrical engineering your your job your scope is limited to only electrical engineering companies maybe control systems automation power systems or at the max designing solar or renewable sources of energy something like that but the beauty of this particular role of data scientist is that you can work as a data scientist even in an electrical engineering company even in machine uh, mechanical engineering machinery civil engineering and project management finance so almost every domain right now is making use of the skills of data science and machine learning engineer and because of this what has happened is that the people who are skilled in this particular job they are actually having good number of opportunities as well as good pay scale for that opportunity because there is a dearth in the demand and supply gap so the demand is really high and the supply is really less as compared to that even if you guys see the curriculum of the different colleges right now we have a bachelor in computer science i mean btech in computer science degree we have btech in it but we do not have any course which caters specifically to data science or machine learning obviously there are advanced minor certifications right now that are being added at bits pilani dj sangli and some of the other colleges but there is no course that is peculiarly focusing on data science or machine learning or ai there are one or two colleges in india like raisuni group of institutions i know is one of the colleges because they are focusing on that particular concept as a whole but the major idea is that still there is no bachelor course in uh, our academic curriculum that is focusing on the skills required for this particular part so what happens is that people who get enrolled in bachelors of computer science or bachelors of it they have the overview of high level knowledge for data science they do not have in depth knowledge they do not get in depth practice sessions or something like that and that is the reason because of this particular part you can see the statistics so requirement is exponential then you can see that the number of roles and data scientists will only increase because as time will pass there will be definitely more data to work around and data is also referred to as oil of the 21st century so if you are good to go with the data if you are, if you can analyze the important trends patterns information in an automated fashion then i think there is no limit to the number of opportunities that you can get from this part so about 11.5 million jobs will be created in 2026 according to us bureau of labor statistics apart from this particular thing there is also one more part that there are many students who in the bachelor's like i have mentored many students i have been working as a part time freelance mentor at different organizations from past 1.5 years and there are many students who actually don't want to work full time they want to work in free, on freelancing basis as well as they want to work or start uh, big projects and build a startup so even if you want to build a startup in this industry it has great scope so even from that perspective this field is really good so the skills that are needed to become a data scientist so obviously software engineering is the basic title obviously you should be good, good in your software engineering skills you should be good in coding but remember this part that the data scientist role and even machine learning role is not all about coding so obviously you should be able to write algorithms like simple algorithms like search sort and optimize you should have familiarity with approximate all algorithms like binary search binary tree euclid binary sort bubble sort and things like that you should be really familiar with data structures like stack queues heaps these are these things are data structures in uh, any programming language but data structures and algorithms is one of the most important things that you should be familiar with then you should understand the computer architecture because if you are good to go with the computer architecture you guys will definitely be really cool with utilizing the available memory so what happens is if you know how python or how r is working at the back end you would be able to optimally use that programming language as far as the memory issues are concerned so you guys might have heard the name of the software hadoop or you might have heard map reduce function so hadoop is typically used when you are having millions of rows in your data set so python or r is not useful when you have millions of rows in your data set because there is a limit to which the data can be handled in python or r 
but if you effectively understand the computer architecture you can definitely move ahead with this particular part there is no issue in that after that you should have data science skills so you should have familiarity with at least python and sql java and even r is one of the programming language which which is fine to have but python and sql are must you should know a lot about statistics the most important topic about statistics that you should know is hypothesis testing which is this particular topic data modeling which comes in sql so creating data models is really important to understand the relationship between different columns of different tables in the same database then you should be really good in probability and mathematic concepts you should understand bayes rules bayes net hidden markov models like these classifiers and things like that and last thing is you should be able to develop an evaluation strategy for predictive models so the high level overview that of the data scientist work is that data scientist is actually expected to prepare a machine learning algorithm and what is that machine learning algorithm machine learning algorithm is a computer program in layman language that can on its own analyze the pattern between input features and target variables and it can obviously map that pattern to future or unseen data so let us take an example that you are working in any bank in india let us say state bank of india which is the biggest public bank in india now what happens is there are different problem statements that you can solve using machine learning right so the most famous problem statement is loan approval you know that there would be many loan applications coming to the particular banks daily all over india right you are completely aware of this particular fact so right now what happens is bank managers are manually doing that particular part some of the banks have automated this part up to an extent but there is a good scope for automation left there so what people expect is that they will feed the features or they will feed the parameter values about a particular candidate for his apply loan application and when you feed that the computer automatically on its own will calculate whether a loan should be approved or not within fraction of seconds so the thing which takes at least one month or 15 days to one month for loan approval that can be done within fraction of seconds and the advantage of this is also scalability accuracy automation so human dependency will be reduced so there are n number of advantages because of which this particular part is used right so after this particular thing the next skill that you need is machine learning skills so machine learning is the hard coded part of data science job role so deep learning dynamic programming neural network architectures natural language processing audio processing video processing reinforcement learning advanced pro signal processing techniques and optimization of the existing algorithm so what happens is that data we need to work on data now what is data this is a broad level question so data is something which is information and information can be in any format information can be present in the form of tables it can be present in the form of audio video it can be present in the form of textual data right so what you need to do is you need to be proficient in working with any kind of data not only tabular data and while doing that there is a new addition which is deep learning to the predictive modeling part so deep learning algorithms have shown superior performance than machine learning algorithms in most of the scenarios right in most of the scenarios the predictive performance of deep learning algorithms is more than what we have expected so if you see this is the approximate graph right here in this particular scenario you get the accuracy let us say accuracy is your metric for judging the performance of the model there are different metrics and here you have data right so there are two things there is an algorithm which works like this and there is another algorithm which works like this so this is one and this is two the part is that the performance of this is saturating with the data so if you feed more data to the algorithm one there is no improvement in the accuracy it is getting saturated whereas in scenario 2 if you feed more data the accuracy would be still increasing so the first one is the graph for machine learning and second one is the graph for deep learning so deep learning frameworks deep learning models have shown superior performance as compared to machine learning algorithms significantly with increase in data obviously 
it will have additional computational cost additional computational time no doubt about it but the performance is far superior than that and there are many organizations which are ready to bear the cost of i mean ready to bear the computational cost associated with deep learning algorithms so you should know ins and outs of how those algorithms work perform and everything and last but not the least not only for data science jobs machine learning jobs in any job that you do you should be good in soft skills so communication skills problem solving skills domain knowledge time management teamwork and thirst for learning so these are definitely some of the things not only for this webinar but for any role that you are doing these soft skills would be essential so there are basically four things that could like some of what are the things essential for becoming a top data scientist or becoming a well respected data scientist in industry right after that in addition to this particular part there are a lot of tools and technologies that you need to work with so the programming languages are python sql java c++ and even r in some scenarios but the softwares that on which you will work is r r studio is a prominent software for that spark and hadoop matlab vika is a really perfect tool for automating machine learning algorithms really few people know about vika so vika is something which was developed by a college by a group of college students in new zealand it was their project work to automate machine learning algorithms so this is a really fantastic application so really few people know about vika because vika is not popular but it is a really good uh, software to use then cloud platforms like google cloud cloud platforms azure cloud platform aws is the famous one so amazon machine learning means aws sage maker and the good old jupyter notebook so jupyter notebook was used a lot few days back or not days few months back but right now there is a huge increase for cloud based solutions like aws sage maker and in future i think everybody will shift to cloud based solution now if you are good to go in the coding part then you are fine but you still need like if you are using cloud based solution or if you want to have more opportunities on your table i would definitely suggest all of you guys to get aws certifications because you should be familiar with the amazon or aws platform for that apart from that are certifications essential for data scientist school it is an absolute yes and the reason for this is something which i have told you guys earlier also the reason for this is that there are no courses in undergrad and graduate at academic institutions right now for data science so there is no prerequisites for getting and go to the course of data science uh, in most of the in most of the colleges you don't have this course and in whatever colleges you have this course there are no prerequisites and they are available in minor scenarios uh, like you can get minor in data science but you cannot get a major degree in data science because that is not available the government of india has actually recognized data science ai and ml as the emerging technologies if you read the blog on internet but currently the colleges do not offer this full time course in data science so that is the reason certifications are really valued in this field experience is really valued in this field and which industries exactly use ml this is one of the major questions that most of the students ask me in many sessions and the answer to this particular part is that any industry there is no such thing like i can tell you that finance industry across the world makes use of ml or marketing industry makes use of ml or something like that no that is not the scenario the part that i want to highlight here is that it depends rather than the industries it depends on the problem statement that you are trying to solve so in healthcare industry there may be a problem which can be solved within fraction of seconds within uh, with the use of machine learning in logistics some problems can be solved in transportation some business some problems can be solved so to be honest with you in every industry right now there is a scope for data scientist position every company if you search on linkedin right now and you type the data scientist job role and if you search for jobs i am 100% sure that you will get uh, uh, the job listings in almost every organization whether it is edutech whether it is healthcare whether it is banking finance manufacturing advertising uh, cement manufacturing any industry even telecom industries making use of data science a lot of my friends from 
University of Maryland College Park are placed in Qualcomm, California office, California, San Francisco, California office, and they are working there as a machine learning engineer. So there is a great scope for this particular part in any domain. So let us say you are a electrical engineer, you are an electrical engineer, you are civil engineer, you are a mechanical engineer. Even after learning this course, you can get a decent position in mechanical engineering companies in commerce companies, in civil engineering companies, in whatever companies you guys have major in. So this will, like, rather than looking to it, you can also look forward to data science as a primary subject. No questions about that. But apart from that also, it can be a really handy addition to your skill set list. So I'm 100% sure that if you go with the skills of data science in your resume, it will definitely add weightage to your resume in the job interviews, 100%. In whatever domain you are working, even if you are working in bi uh, biology domain, even if you are working in healthcare domain, still it will add a really good weightage in your resume, right? And about my experience, so these are the some, some of the companies which I have worked in the past. So the first two companies, Code Wizards and CBRE, uh, is the position where I worked as an intern. So CBRE, as all of you guys know, is a big name in construction management in the United States and in India, they have their office in Delhi and Hyderabad. So it is a really good company. It is a really reputed company and I worked there as a data analyst. I worked on Microsoft SQL Server and Tableau. I created some dashboards in Tableau for clients. I worked on writing uh, stored procedures, optimizing the execution time of already existing uh, stored procedures at CBRE. And this was a this was a three month internship in my summer break during my masters. I worked in the Dallas, Texas office for some time. And based on my internship performance, the company was really happy, and they actually wanted to like they gave me the pre placement offer, and they wanted me to join in their uh, office full time after my masters. Even I joined their company full time after my masters. But after that, due to some family issues, I had to came come back to India. I came back to India and. October 2021, uh, 2020, October 2020, and then I started looking for jobs. The first job I actually wanted to be a data scientist because I, I had a huge experience as well as academic qualifications in the field of machine learning and data science. But due to COVID-19 pandemic at that time, I was not able to fetch data scientist roles. So I worked for some time at Ubum Solutions as a SQL developer. I, I, I've written a lot of stored procedures at this particular job. I also shifted a lot of existing automated jobs from talent to Informatica. And then I got a better opportunity to work as a data analyst, as an associate data analyst at Forward Safety. And Forward Safety is a really good MNC headquartered in Australia and they have their offices in England. Too. So in India, they have their team. But India team works remotely and they have their offices in Australia and, in, uh, and London. So what happens is that in forward safety, they are primarily into creating CRM platform for safety of industrial and mining workers. So you guys know that there are, there are a lot of mishappenings uh, in mining industry and the workers there, there are many scenarios in which the workers have lost their lives. So the work of forward safety is in safety risk analytics, safety analytics, and they want to make sure that they are creating a safety platform or CRM platform, which will ensure safety of the workers who work in their mines or the workers who work in mines for their clients. So forward safety is not a company which works in mining industry, but they sell their CRM platform to a lot of organizations. So some of the big companies like Rio Tinto, where our clients and we were designing CRM platform for them. After that, after working there, I worked, actually, I worked there on AWS with site. So all of the data analysis work that forward safety does is with the help of data visualization. And I worked on AWS with site there for a good amount of time. And I got good experience on AWS platform there. And finally, I really, I got, like, I was applying to, uh, to companies for data center roles. So I got the job which I actually wanted after my master's, after coming back to India, which is the data scientist job role. So I uh, worked as a data scientist at Z Daily in creating an end-to-end -end machine learning algorithm 
that could predict product quality analysis issue in one of the petrochemical plants. So Zdali is a startup actually, guys. It is headquartered in Austin, Texas, and they have their office in Bangalore, India. And what they do is they also like forward safety are creating a CRM platform for petrochemical industry clients. So some of the top petrochemical clients like Motiva, BP, Petro Seven. shell they were making use of our platform and for one of the clients there was a requirement that there is a product quality analysis issue so what was happening is the station owners were mixing the branded fuel with unbranded fuel and obviously the station owners did that because they wanted to increase the profit but it was causing a deteriorated experience to all the customers as well as it was decreasing the profit that our client was making so i created an end to end algorithm to identify this automatically and update it on our crm platform so since that dali was a startup i was the only person working on this particular problem statement but it the best experience that i have in my resume for creating end to end ml algorithms from this particular job because i learned a lot of things which i was not having knowledge of in academics so the difference between academic knowledge and practical industry exposure is something that you can see in my profile from this side that so i'm really happy that i got this opportunity to create that end to end machine learning algorithm here and we deploy i deployed it into production i did the maintenance work for this particular part and after that there was no data science work left in the team so after creation of that algorithm and everything i was at the company actually wanted me to shift to full stack development since it was a startup the data science work was done but since i had a huge experience up to that particular point of time in analytics industry i was expecting to work in the same industry because i really like this industry not for this boot camp or something like that but even without the boot camp if you guys get in touch with me i really love this analytics industry the kind of work that you get the kind of difference that you would make with the skills that you gain from this analytics industry or data science industry is something really different and finally after that i got my job as a data scientist at edelweiss financial services limited so currently i'm working there as a data scientist and as all of you guys know edelweiss is a big name in finance industry right so edelweiss creates a lot of products not only in mutual funds and it is primarily into trading financial markets so whether it is intraday trading etf trading uh, options trading so what i do is i work in the central data team at edelweiss and the primary reason because of which the central data team was created is because the end motive that our team has to provide data to the researchers in timely format so there are a lot of researchers to whom i serve data so there are a lot of intraday traders for which i have written automated jobs there are etf traders and there are options traders for which i have written a job so you know in finance industry there is month end activity month start activity expiries corporate actions and all of these like i actually help in creating automated trading platforms at it guys so how to handle expiries how to handle uh, month end activity how to handle month start activity how to handle corporate actions all of these things are done in an automated way and we have written codes for that at advise and uh, there are there there is a high level objective at edelweiss that all of us have that we need to build a platform with these three things in mind so this is the main motive with which i am currently working and this is the next big thing in analytics industry so data as a service you might have heard software as a service so we are actually working on creating a platform with data as a service second is algorithm as a service and the last part is whenever you feed data to the quantitative researchers you also need to apply checks whether the data is proper or not so third part is checks as a service right so with these three things in mind we are creating a central data platform at edelweiss financial services limited apart from that i work in gm department of advice gm means global markets so whatever are the strategies that our quantitative researchers actually develop they are the strategies which can be applied to any market right it can be applied to us market japan market 
australian market or things like that so currently we are allowed to do trading in india we are allowed to do trading in us and japan and australian market there are four markets in which we are allowed to trade including indian market and i actually am to, like giving data to the researchers who are currently catering to india and japan india and us market and we right now are trying japan market so i'm writing automated jobs for giving data to researchers on japan market so that is the thing that i'm currently doing at edelweiss so edelweiss is a great place it is a great like almost every data scientist comes that like like if there are 100 data scientists and you interview them at least 50 to 60% of them want to work in finance industry they want to apply the knowledge that they have of data science and machine learning in finance industry right so with that said i think here i can sum up my particular part and then nikita you can take forward and then we can have a qa session uh, yeah uh, thank you so much sir after listening to your experience and uh, scope of data science i think being an and my management student even i got bit of interest into that i was using so carefully even after i wasn't able to understand so much but i think all the future data scientists uh, present here they would have take, taken a lot of inputs and a lot of uh, learnings from the session you guys will you nikita you and all the students will understand it like i understand you are new to this particular part some of the things you guys might not get but after the course curriculum is done obviously there should be some gap that is why you will get enrolled in course curriculum right. but after course is done you will get everything and this is a fantastic field to work with from my experience right very true sir so um, thank you so much now we have planned a interesting ice breaking session for you all and uh, there there i go so i'll be sharing the screen so did you start to share yeah okay so i'll be sharing my screen um shruti you have to help me during this you have to uh, see the which student is raising their hand and you have to call them out they can unmute and they can speak or even they can put it in chat box okay um team from black box anyone from black box okay so i think uh, all of you can unmute your uh, mics and then come on mic and speak about it so what is this ice breaking about it's about uh, different companies that have successfully adopted data science so i'll be uh, displaying the logos of that company and then you have to guess which company is it and these are the companies that you come across in day to day life so it's not going to be very difficult and after telling the name if you could tell how they implemented data science it, it would be great otherwise we have pranav sir who can assist us on that okay uh, so shruti if you're here are you able to hear me yeah yeah, yeah. So please uh, take the names of students who raise their hands and uh, call them on the mic. Should we start? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the first company is this. Can you see the screen? Can I get a response from someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. I am able to see the screen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hundred grammar in chat. Okay, someone typed Grammarly in chat. Can that person come on uh, mic and tell how do they know about Grammarly and how data science is related to uh, Grammarly? It would be great if you come across. Anyone? I think Koshik typed Grammarly, and uh, there's one number, so I don't know who is this. Koshik, can you come on mic and tell us how or do you know that Grammarly is connected to data science? Uh, okay. Anyways, I think uh, Pranav sir, can you tell if you know about it? Yeah, yeah. Grammarly is actually, guys, a really good platform. Uh, you can buy paid subscriptions from Grammarly. and what actually happens is that this company is as it is written by hariharan here that it is for spelling checking and hariharan has given to nlp yes so what they do is they create algorithms so there is there is a popular statement and popular question statement in machine uh, in nlp that can you predict the next word so if you type something on google you know that there are suggestions that come up even on whatsapp yeah. if you type there are suggestions that come up so how do these suggestions come up there are nlp algorithms running at the back end that give you suggestions 
so grammarly is making like i have not worked with grammarly so i don't exactly know what algorithms they use but probably this is something around which grammarly will evolve nlp as earlier and as given this perfect perfect so going ahead with next can someone it's very easy so yeah anyone can tell they can put on chat they can come on mic i couldn't see any response it's a yeah true koshik is very active i would like if he wants to speak on mic if he knows anything about data science it's it's completely okay even if your answer is wrong we are not judging here with their answers it's just about your uh, interaction that's it okay so it's google uh so you would like to say something about google or i uh, i am nobody to speak about google actually yeah. but everybody True. knows google is a really big platform and there are different problem statements like even from search engine identifying spam emails the email a gmail application that all of you guys use so even there you guys <laughs> are buddy really can you please mute your mic who is this kaushik it was kaushik so there are nlp models that are being used then there are search engine optimizations then there is marketing part so google earns a lot of revenue to marketing so there are different domains the different yeah. problem statement different algorithms running simultaneously in google yeah so yeah so the next company is this anyone knows which company is this i couldn't see any response on chat anyone <clears throat> anyone else okay so i'm going to reveal the name this is tempus so do you want to speak about this company or i should go ahead uh it is actually some thing in biotechnology if i'm not wrong True. so healthcare industry is a really big part where like healthcare insurance industry there is a really good company in india for which yeah. i gave interview and i was selected as a data scientist there Yeah. It was Optum. All of you guys can search. So it is about health insurance, right? Yeah. The it is one of it is one of the big it has one of the biggest markets in health insurance. Similar to that, Tempus is a company in biology industry, but it works on researching in different medicines and high dimensional data, molecular biology. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. So this is how we see how data science is taking over all the industries, not just the IT sector, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Moving ahead, uh, what is the name of this company? Anyone? General companies, Grammarly, Google. It's very general. I would really appreciate if someone know about these companies. Foreign. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Should I repeat the name then? it's narrative science uh pranav sir would you like to say anything about it i think it's what very you, similar to the other yes, company yes yes what do you guys think narrative science will be about so it is narration it is about storytelling data description so yeah, yeah. one of the really important parts of data scientist field is exploratory data analysis eda so what is present in the data what does the data telling you about the part so that is what you guys can get from this perfect and any idea about this company i want the audience to be interactive more we have 74 participants here and i couldn't see more responses here you can get you can guess it no one is going to like call you on the mic and just say anything you can tell any guesses i'll just count for 5 and then we'll go ahead Newtonomy, okay. The man responded Newtonomy, okay. Let's reveal the name now. It's Newtonomy, perfect. Ah, uh, great Hari, what is the name? Hari Haran, great response. Okay, it's fine. You googled it. It's totally fine. At least you interacted. I appreciate that. Ah, uh, Pranav sir, you would like to say something on that? Yes, Newtonomy is about self-driving cars, guys. So, mm -hmm. 
computer vision problems computer vision is one of the big sub topics in deep learning open cv mm-hmm. is a really good library in deep learning through which you do you try to create algorithms for computer vision path navigation drone delivery so back during my masters there was a really close friend of mine from the same city and we were both studying at university of maryland and he was in robotics i was in electrical and computer engineering he is yeah. now working for a company which is into drone industry so okay. this is about that particular part okay okay all right okay we have some questions um, just a second i'll read out okay so someone i i don't have the name but whoever is it we are going to come to the q and a session at the last so don't worry keep your doubts with yourself and we are going to answer it each one of them uh going ahead which company is this any guesses guys this is the this is probably the last company okay good ankit anyone else is it uh, the company that ankit mentioned or yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah yeah good good ankit and good hariharan you guys have a good knowledge yeah so do you guys want to tell about this industry like before i yeah we would appreciate ankit hariharan if you want to come on mic and speak so it is all so yours back during when i was like playing a lot of games yes henvidia was into creating graphic cards yeah so yeah there were really graphic cards if you were playing a lot of computer games you will remember that mm-hmm. graphic card was something which nvidia was making but right now nvidia is into computer hardware manufacturing so they generally try to build gpus cpus and like the latest architecture that is available they try to optimize that existing architecture so that computational cost can be reduced so that is the main motive behind that okay okay what is this company anyone come on any- guys this is this is obvious okay <laughs> but i didn't get any response in chat we were waiting for it. people to say so this is anybody wants to speak <laughs> we revealed anyways they're not responding ha uh, qualcomm so someone qualcomm, says quicker yes, okay someone I says that they're very near they know the q word and they are guessing from the q letter there is something related to q quicker quantico okay fine no 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 actually yeah. as i told you in the description of that uh, presentation one of my fr- friend is working here as a machine learning engineer in oh. san francisco office so wow. they are primarily into telecom industry they try to create machine learning models in and try to optimize the existing speed and things like that. so making use of ml data science in telecom industry yeah so that was it so thank you so much i guess you all had fun with this and uh, we we got to know about various companies that is using data, data science extensively and pranav sir helped us to gain that knowledge and um, during your interviews this companies this knowledge this uh, general que- uh, general knowledge questions may come handy to you so this was a part of your uh, mock interview only so now um just a second yeah so now we we are here with our uh, last part of our last part of the segment uh that is now we come to the q and a segment i would appreciate everyone to kindly raise their digital hands with the help of available reaction button i'll call, call each one of you one by one so keep raising your hand uh but before that uh, i got a sheet of a google fee- google form feedbacks where you have put your doubts uh before the before the session started so while registering for the session i guess you all have put your uh, question that you would like Pran- pranav sir to answer so i have listed some of the questions and i would like to ask it questions to pranav sir and you can answer them so should i go ahead yeah 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 okay Obviously. the first question is what are the main languages or the courses that have to be learned to become a data scientist first question first part of the question by varada anil kumar if is here uh, this answer to the yes. answer to the question this is a really important question that he has answered because there might be many more members who are having same question so python is the most preferred language if you are creating machine learning algorithms and after python some of the companies are even good to go with r programming language so python and r are really useful for creating algorithms but you sh- apart from that you should also have good knowledge of at least one database language either mysql microsoft sql or something like that so these are the least uh, i mean this is the least Thing that you should know if you want to be a data scientist. But apart from that, if you want to be a 
expert data scientists, you can go into softwares like Hadoop, Hive, Spark, MongoDB. MongoDB is really good for unstructured data. So these are some of the softwares that you can go. Cloud-based solutions also. But basic is at least Python R SQL. Okay. So this was the first part of his question. The second part of his question says that which country is good for data scientist job opportunities, either USA or Canada? US, obviously USA, because there is a good market. There is no second option. Uh, like even if you write India and US, I would say USA because for complete IT industry itself, there is a good hub. USA is a far better hub than any other country. And if you want, like I have trained students in the past who were planning to go for MS, but before going to MS, what happens in the United States is that you have to handle a lot of things on your own. So they enrolled in one of the course curriculum because they wanted to learn all the data science part here itself. And then when they go there, even if they have less bandwidth in their schedule, like because they have to do part-time jobs, they have to manage all the skills, then they can manage the time. So never, like no second questions, USA. USA is the only answer for that. Okay, so I hope your question was answered, uh, Varada. The next question is, someone says, I want to know about the role of data analyst and how I should reach it in order to get into top MNCs. So for getting into top MNCs as a data analyst, the first thing that you should do is that you should be really good in the Python, SQL and R. Okay, these are the basic things. Apart from that, you should, you should have, you should read blogs, to be honest with you. There are different uh, blogs, there are different websites like Analytics with their KD Nuggets towards data science, which give updated content. So Jupyter Notebook is a really old software, to be honest with you, in that field. So you should know what company. So companies will hire you only if you have the latest updated knowledge. There will be a lot of people with Jupyter Notebook, but really few in AWS. So you should know what is the part where you should upskill yourself. So that is probably the best answer for this. Okay. So the next question for you, sir, is how to be a data scientist. So many of them uh, told about this road for, roadmap for data scientists. So I'm clubbing all these questions and I'm giving you a question that is how to be a data scientist. So tell them the roadmap. So data scientist uh, is a role even I wanted to be a data scientist right after my master's. And to be honest with you, data scientist is a role which is a mid-senior role in any organization. So there are different uh, levels in organization, entry level, then slightly experienced one, two years experience, then mid-senior level, which are three to three plus years experienced people. Then there is management, senior management and things like that. So you need at least two years of experience uh, to be a data scientist at a good organization. There are few organizations, I don't deny this fact that people directly as freshers can get into data scientists. But as far as I have seen, you need to work as a data analyst first, get some experience on your resume, and then try for data scientist position. So this is a tried and tested way. But being that said, if you're really exceptional in the skills, you will get opportunity as a fresher also to become data scientist. Okay, perfect. So the next question is by um, Hariharan. Uh, he says that I'm currently pursuing my third year BTEC and I would like to know if there are any sub parts of being a data analyst or please tell how a day of data analyst go in terms of mindset and things he or she goes through professionally. Pranav sir. So we can't hear you, you're on mute if you're speaking. Hello. <clears throat> okay, wait. Yeah. Can yeah, you... I'm sorry. Yeah. What yeah. happened is host has had unmuted me, so I was not able to speak. So okay. yes, the answer to the question is if you are expect like what should be the daily routine of a data analyst when it enters the office, the answer is that data science is a field which is less about coding, maybe 20-30% is about coding, but the majority of the portion is about brainstorming. So when you code, what you do is you just ask the computer to do what, what you would do for like if you are analyzing one stock, let us say, 
for buy or sell segments let us say you are analyzing the stock for uh, x company okay and you want to find whether in intraday trading you should buy or sell that stock so what happens is code will be doing the particular part which you are expecting to do for 200 500 stocks but it is you who have to brainstorm the logic behind that so the most of the time that a data scientist or data analyst spends is brainstorming sessions getting in touch with clients getting in touch with team leads getting in touch with the uh, colleagues and then working on that part so majority of the part 30 to 40% is about brainstorming 30 to 40% is in data cleaning and remaining 20% you can say is about coding so after you know what you need to do then you do that part okay uh, the last question from the google form was what is the package of for data scientist fresher so data scientist fresher that term itself i don't appreciate because data scientist i think is a role which should be after 2 years at least after 2 years but with that said there are some companies who hire data scientist as freshers with package anywhere from 8 9 lakhs up to 22 lakhs so again it depends on how exceptional you are so 22 lakhs one is an outlier but i have seen people getting hired at 22 lpa directly after their uh, bachelor's masters as a fresher that's a really good package i see so um, i see some questions in chat box as well so i would like to read that out can we reach a higher position like cto or ceo obviously CEO? yes i i read that abhi uh, obviously you can reach that because what happens is ceo cto or any management position so understand the hierarchy in corporate ladder what happens in corporate ladder you join that company as any entry level role right and then you work that you make a difference and you show to the management that you are somebody who has made a lot of difference and if you um, are in the management if you, if they take you in the management of that in the management group you will definitely make some difference so management roles like ceo and cto are more about managing the people than about technical analysis so there can be a person who is just working on power bi creating visuals not good at coding he has never coded in python still that person can one day become ceo or cto because it, the managerial positions are about managing people that is why the word is manager whereas when it comes to technical roles uh, it is more about the technical analysis coding and everything but with that said data scientist is a really respectable position in skill set salary making a difference and everything so there would be no issues in that if you join a company as a data scientist and if you wish to become that ceo cto one day okay so i think um, now we are like if anyone has more doubts they can raise their hand and they can put it in the chat box we'll take for more 2 minutes and then we'll end the session so someone kaushik says sir when i came across skills needed for data science uh, is the day i got into third year in the college is it possible to gain that skills in that short time so again i will tell you the part is dedication and proper schedule because we are have even seen students getting enrolled to the post curriculum but not revising the part and since they are not revising or they are not having a proper schedule for that they start falling out of sync so i am discussing hyperparameter optimization in one of the lectures and they are searching on google how to import a csv file in python and this is something which happens a lot right so the part is you you need to be really serious about this part you need to build a proper plan and even in one year or even in six months before your placement starts in your organization i think you can do it but the part is you will have to go an extra mile for that okay so before taking other questions uh, we have put a google form in the chat box would we would appreciate if everyone can fill that feedback form it would be great for speaker it would be great for black box as an organization to know how uh, this session helped you and how can we improve further so please take out a time it won't take your more than one or two minutes so please fill that form and if anyone has more doubt uh, we'll take it for i'll just wait for five seconds maybe and then we can uh, we are already in the end of the session so uh, anyone with any doubt i don't see anything in chat box and i don't see any hands raised so i think uh, you all are uh, good to go and all your doubts are solved i'm assuming that because 
I, I couldn't see anything on chat anymore. Okay. So with this, uh, it's uh, exactly seven right now. So I think uh, we had a perfect uh, timeline for the session. So it has been such an honor to host this wonderful session. On behalf of Black Books, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our respectable guest, Mr. Pranav Jaipurkar. Your thoughts and knowledge are, have truly inspired mm -hmm. us and helped every future data scientist to indulge their knowledge into the right field. Since it, thanks to Mrs. Anuradha ma'am, uh, she couldn't make it to the meeting, but uh, all thanks to her for uh, organizing such meeting. And a wide, a wide round of applause and thanks to all the participants who made the session a memorable. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat>